Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you may know from my uh, flushing mercury video, I've got a lot of mercury that I need to get distilled. So I've got the three flasks that I've got uh, contaminated with gold, but really that's not top of my priorities. Uh, you know, a few parts per million gold really isn't that bad. As long as the mercury's shiny, and I've got some that isn't contaminated with gold, then I'm perfectly happy uh, using it as is. But what I do have quite a lot of that does absolutely need to get distilled is this here. This stuff was actually used in mining, and it's got a lot of uh, lead, copper, and zinc dissolved into it. When, and I can run this through a filter and it'll look shiny for a few days, but once the air gets into it, it'll oxidize and it looks terrible again. Also, it's really sticky. It likes to stick to uh, stuff. So, I've got a bunch of this stuff that I need to get distilled, and if I've got time, I'll uh, run through those uh, other flasks that have got the gold contamination. So, I've got some stuff over here I was thinking of using. I don't really like the idea of doing a huge batch process. You know, like have a big uh, pot still basically with a you know, five gallon volume and you know, three gallons of mercury in there and just build a fire under it. It would work, but I don't really like the idea of having that much mercury hot all at once. Something goes wrong, it really goes wrong. So I want to do something that's got, you know, small quantities, like this uh, little distillation apparatus there that I've built. So something about that size I think I could handle. If that explodes, it's not going to be environmental disaster, you know. <laughs> but if I do something that small in batches, I'm going to be doing dozens of them. It's going to take me forever. So I was thinking what I'm going to do is actually use a continuous feed process. So I've got this little uh, portable fire pit here, which I've used for many things. And uh, I think what I'll do is have this set into the side of it, just like I was trying to do with the cesium. I might add a water jacket, I'm not really sure yet. But I've already drilled a hole in the bottom, you can see right there. And I've got some brake line. See this? Everything must be made out of iron, otherwise it'll be destroyed by the mercury. I'm going to run the mercury into the boiling vessel through the brake line. Okay. So I got these fittings that I can weld this into it and then screw that in. Makes a nice uh, tight fit. That should be totally fine and I can take this apart and clean it. And this way I can have a vessel with an open top. You know, maybe I'll put something over it, but you know, open to the atmosphere that I can weld this into and just kind of position this so that the mercury level and this matches the mercury level that's in here, and just make it so the mercury level is about halfway up on this. So have them set kind of like this, but you know, farther apart. That way when I put mercury in here, it'll flow through into here, and then boil and get distilled. That's the idea at least. And hopefully I can do quite a lot of mercury this way. So let's get this thing welded together. So the first thing I need to do is punch a hole in the bottom of this so that the pipe can go through it. Also, this pipe's a little bit thin. I don't really want the fire to be touching that directly, so I'm gonna have to put a, another pipe around it. Maybe fill the inside with plaster, even. Oh, did I? I did. I cut it on the wrong side. <laughs> Get the torch back out. I think we're about out of gas. I can't blow the metal as good as I'd like. So that's welded. It doesn't look beautiful, but I had to do it in sections and I was making darn sure that it didn't have any pinholes. In fact, I might do another uh, layer of weld on top of it just to make sure. And there we are. Alright, that's tight. Let's set this little pipe over top right there. Tack it on. In fact, I'm going to beat it down a little bit. Actually, I might just be able to use a friction fit there. 
There it is. See, that's perfect. Comes out of the bottom there, so it'll be nice and cold. It doesn't get that little tube too hot. I'm going to build a water jacket for it. So I got a piece of pipe here and a washer that'll go over this, uh, the other pipe. And I can just uh, have this full of water. into the gap. I just kind of quickly throw my uh, welder over into the air. You can see it right up. There we go. That's good. I'm taking the zinc off of some pipe using some hydrochloric acid. That way, instead of galvanized pipe, I'll have just bare iron pipe. Don't want to contaminate the uh, cleaned mercury with zinc now, do I? There's one. So here it is. I've shoved it through the uh, condenser. I'm just going to weld right there. Okay, the final thing I'm welding on this is a bolt and a nut right there. Oh, actually I'm just welding the nut in there, so I can take the bolt out. That way I can uh, add something or take something out. Let's weld it on. So here it is, all finished. You can see the water jacket there, there's a pump in the bucket to pump water around. That's my reservoir where I'll put stuff in for it to flow in that to get boiled. And I've got some uh, charcoal briquettes in there. Let's light it up. Just like that. Now for this uh, first run I'm just going to use water. You know, just in case there's a jet of steam coming out. You know, I want it to be steam. I don't want it to be mercury steam. So, let's just see if this will go into there. And then come back out. I'm not sure if there's water getting in here, so I've removed that bolt. I'm just going to stick this in there. Oh yeah, there's water in there. Good. Let's put the bolt back. Looks like this thing's actually working. See, it's taking the water down. I'm putting it over there. I don't see any leaks or anything. What's funny about this is I actually built this uh, main body of the thing in my shop class in high school. And uh, upon seeing it, the teacher said that I was making a still. And it wasn't a still. It was a, a gasifier stove. It never really worked for that. And it looks like I ended up making a still out of it. <laughs> Although, this really can't concentrate alcohol. And it's not designed for that. So the last of the water's boiled out. I'm just going to take this stuff that I distilled. I'm going to pour it on the charcoals. So I think I've got everything set up to distill some mercury. There's the still, I've got everything in this plastic tub here, so that when I spill stuff, which I already have actually, it is all contained. So I've got the water circulating here, you can see. It's going up through this uh, condenser. And I'm actually using this uh, empty flask here as a uh, mercury catchment reservoir. So the mercury's going to come down here and drip right into this flask. I mostly chose that because I could screw it right into this pipe fitting. Uh, this means that you're not going to be able to see the mercury distilling over, but if you want to see uh, mercury distilling in a glass apparatus, you can go over to my friend uh, Nile Red's uh, channel and see it there. I'll uh, post a link down in the description for that. Now this is a vented design. As the mercury comes down, it's going to displace air, so the air's got to have somewhere to go. I just got this uh, thin tube coming off here. And really, by the time the vapor gets down to here, it's going to be so cold that I don't think any of it will really escape. If any mercury does condense, I'll catch it down there. Uh, it'd be nice to have the end of this submerged in water, but uh, that'd be a very bad idea. Having water get sucked back up into this would uh, cause an explosion. So anyway, come over here, you got my uh, 
little reservoir of mercury. I've already got some in there. You can see it's already got some oxide coating in there. Yeah, it's some very dirty mercury, really. Incidentally, this film of metallic oxides that forms on the mercury here, that actually keeps the mercury from evaporating. I did a video a while ago where I put a drop of mercury underneath a microscope and then put some heat lamps on it to try to see it uh, evaporating, and it never evaporated. You know, a tiny droplet of mercury, it never evaporated after months. And I finally figured out it was because I used a dirty mercury that had other metals mixed with it that formed an oxide coating that prevented the mercury from evaporating. I have been squeezing it through a syringe with a piece of cotton down the bottom to uh, take out any uh, dirt and stuff that would uh, otherwise clog up my system. But as you can see, I can't get everything. I can't get the dissolved metals out this way. I have to distill it. So, yeah, I got me a dish of mercury down here. I got about a flask there ready to be distilled. You can see there's some dirt and it's very ugly looking. Yeah, so the mercury comes down here, down this uh, drop, which uh, acts as a valve that keeps the mercury from going back through. In fact, I figured the amount of pressure needed to uh, push all the mercury up out of this tube is uh, somewhere on the order of about 5 to 6 psi, which is quite a lot of pressure. Got me a little blower right here, which I think is running. Yeah, it's running. Just uh, giving a slight draft so that the coal will burn hotter. All right, we have fire. I'm turning back now. I'll definitely stay upwind of this thing, just in case. I don't know if you can hear it, but it almost sounds like there's ball bearings rolling down this pipe. The mercury is actually distilling over and I can hear it. It's like making a, a rattly metallic noise as it comes down and lands into this jar down here. So far nothing's come out of this little tube. Uh, a little bit of water vapor, but that's about it. So I think this thing's working. I don't know if you can see right here, but there's water dripping out of the bottom of the furnace. I was like, what? And then I realized this tube is full of plaster. And as the plaster heats up, the water is released from it. And it's condensing on this tube and running down. So, everything's fine. Looks like I need to add some more charcoal. This uh, grilling charcoal is probably not the best stuff to use for this. It's very ashy. Yeah, you can totally see the level of mercury in there has been going down. Excellent. So I think I'm just going to keep doing this until I run out of charcoal and we'll cool everything off and see how much we distilled. So as I've been going along, the water has been getting quite hot. So every now and then I take some water out and put some new cold water back in. I mean, even if the water boiled, I don't think the mercury would stop condensing. But I don't think my pump can handle boiling water too well. I think if I improve this design, I'm going to add a radiator in line so I can, uh, you know, save water. Okay, so the curiosity got the best of me. I had to open it. I took the uh, vent tube off here. If we can kind of look in there, you might be able to see there is mercury falling. It's about how fast it's condensing. Little droplets whizzing by. Let me just put this back on now. Well, that's it. I'm out of charcoal. I only had half a bag anyway. Man, I am not using that stuff again. So much ash. I think even cow pies would have a less of an ash content. Anyway, I'm going to let this cool off for a little while. We're going to open up that jug and see how much mercury we distilled over. Get this off of here. See how much mercury we got. Feels heavy. Oh yeah. Where's my bucket? See what we got in here. That's it, it looks pretty good. Looks like it's got a little bit of rust mixed with it and some water that was in the bucket. But ultimately that mercury seems rather shiny. I can clean that up pretty nice doesn't have any of the uh, metals in it. That's probably over 20 pounds that we distilled there. Cool. 
but I can already see that there's no oxide coating forming. This is fundamentally cleaner than the other stuff. See, it's not sticking to the bucket or my rag. This is, of course, just uh, once distilled mercury. To get it uh, chemically pure, I might need to distill it once again, or maybe three times to get triple distilled mercury. <laughs> Thing is, uh, sometimes you might get a little bit of mercury that like boils up and bounces into the uh, condenser. So, there you go. But this is definitely way cleaner than it was. So I'm happy with it. Took half a bag of charcoal in about an hour to get 20 pounds. So, you can extrapolate from there. Although I intend to do some uh, improvements before I start this thing up again. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.